Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Horror Room. I'm Travis Bruce, and today we're doing another Indie Horror Spotlight. Today, I have with us a special guest. She is the producer, writer, and she's also starring in a new short movie called Doom. I have Jasmine Cornell with us. Jasmine, welcome to the Horror Room. Hey, thank you so much for having me. It is it's really a, awesome to be here. I, and by the way, thank you for interviewing me before this interview. That was amazing. I, I don't have that many guests who interview me. And like, who are you as a person? That's pretty amazing. Yeah, well, I mean, because it, it always just feels like in these interviews, like it's so one-sided, but like, you know, in a regular conversation, it's a back and forth, you know? Um, so yeah, I just wanted to know a little bit about you and I'm really grateful that you, that you asked me to do this. Um, a little bit about me, I started out as an actress um, for many, many years, and then I started writing a lot, and then I started to produce. I, I got the producing bug and and filmmaking, and I started to make web series, and um, specifically comedy and horror, I really focused on. I love comedy and horror, and uh, I, I produce a, a, a short, um, a very short-lived web series that was um, an anthology horror kind of like um, American Horror Story. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, now, is it, do you think by working on the other side of camera as an actress, it helps you be a writer and producer? Oh yeah, 100%. Um, I think acting is very, emotional and intuitive thing and you know you may not you may not think of it that way but writing is also emotional and intuitive and you're kind of following the emotional through line and you're you're um you're following um a, you're following all the way through to like real emotional beats that come naturally and then you kind of go back and kind of polish polish it up and then when when it comes to filmmaking um you got to trust your gut you got to trust your gut and um i learned that from acting now, is it tough, you know, being on the filmmaking side and then jumping back to the actress side? Yes. <laughs> and, and and you see how other filmmakers operate and you're like, damn, like, I don't like this. I would do X, Y, Z. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, do I do that all the time. I think I learned a lot and I absorbed a lot when I was just an actress and kind of watching and learning and seeing how people do things and wondering, hmm, you know, maybe smarter to do it this way, or um, I have a lot of ideas that come to mind and, and I just couldn't keep it in and I and I just had to try and execute some of my ideas and like some of the things that I felt like might work on set and um, and how to run a set, et cetera. Um, but it's, it's fucking hard to have to jump from, you're like switching hats all, all throughout the day because, you know, people are, are asking you writing questions and because you're the writer, but then also you got to jump into the character and then you have to put the producing hat on because you got to make sure everybody eats and et cetera, et cetera. Make sure this this is moving from here to there, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just like, I I kind of I kind of like it, though, <laughs> but maybe because I'm crazy um, I, <laughs> like, and I get bored. But like sometimes I do wish, you know, I wish I could just focus on one thing for a long period of time. But also at the same time, I can't focus on one thing <laughs> for a long period of time. So I like having to jump like, oh, okay, so we have to deal with this. Oh, okay, so I'm doing this. Okay, drop into the character, etc. cetera. And um, yeah, I just get off on all of it. <laughs> see, me, I, see, I wish I could be that way, but I can only fucking focus on one thing at a time. And maybe that's because I'm a man, I don't fucking know. But like I can only focus on one thing at a time. If you give me a bunch of tasks to do, or give me a, hey, and if you do this, this, and that, it's gonna be fucked up. I mean, it's it's gonna be, <laughs> like I like to focus on one thing, get it done well, perfect, and then move on to the next task. So I I I, I can't even imagine. Uh, it's hard when I'm trying to do it at the very same time. You know, um, like say if I'm directing a, a certain project, then I also am looking at the scene as a director, but I'm also in it. So that's also, yes. that's hard to do at the same time, which is why I usually bring on a director to a project to help me out. Um, but but for me, I think I am doing a bunch of things, but I'm kind of stopping one thing and starting and focusing on another. 
and then focusing on the next thing and then focusing on the next thing instead of thinking of it like it's all happening at the same time because then I go crazy. Then I can't do it. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, I will go. Absolutely. Woo, yeah. yeah. So, all right. So I'm assuming a lot of caffeine is being consumed. Is it coffee, Red Bulls? What, what, what you are talking you? about me? No, yes, this well, is just well, jasmine. <laughs> okay. No, this is just jasmine. No, I think because like I had like a good productive day. So I'm like, you know, I'm high off being productive. I don't know if anyone else gets high off productivity. Because I, I know on especially indie movie sets, it can be, you know, eight to twelve hour days. Are you able to keep it up the whole entire time? Oh, you! I thought you were asking me about today. Like, oh no, in general, so no. <laughs> you are pumped right now. <laughs> um. Well, yeah. No, I get tired. I for sure get tired. Um. Definitely, when I'm doing a project, and I'm um, you know, I'm doing all these things, and there's so many things that I that I'm worried about. I'm thinking about big picture things, and I'm thinking about small details, and everything is very important. So then, when I when I am focused, it like in the moment, trying to be in the moment, focused on all these things. By the time we get to the end of the shoot, like I'm done, like dead, <laughs> dead. I have to recover. It, it feels like a, a, you know, I have to take at least a few days to kind of recover from doing a shoot. If it's if it's more than one day, especially. Now, now, how do you recover after a day on a shoot? Because like I can imagine your brain is going a hundred miles per hour yeah. thinking about the next day or thinking about things that happen. So yeah. how do you, when you, you get have home, no idea. <laughs> how do you shut that off or do you shut it off? No, <laughs> <laughs> I think cause, well, I mean, part of it is probably my ADHD. It's very hard for me to relax. So <laughs> when on those days, when I, when it's like that my brain won't shut off because even when the day is over, something comes to mind where I have an idea like, oh, we need to remember to shoot, to, to add this shot to the, to the next day. We need to make sure that, um, you know, I, I do whatever it is. And, or, or even if it's just like an extra thing that comes to mind where I'm like, oh, this would be a really great idea if we, if we also did this or say I'm like problem solving, there's like constant problem solving happening in my brain. Like maybe we did a shot and it just wasn't, it, it didn't hit the way I needed it, you know? And yeah. so, and so I'm like, oh, we'll fix it in post, but then maybe I get an idea and the next day we, we shoot a, di a different way and it's great. Okay. But, it, but it's just like, also I'm, but that's why I get so tired because my brain will be da, 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 da. Listen, and then I like, I don't get, get it. I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's hard for me because you know, I have a full-time job and then I do this. I tell you, I do somewhere between three to four interviews a day. Yeah. Right, which is a lot. And, you know, then I have my personal life. So, but my, it's hard for me to turn my brain off with work and um, the interviews, the channel, yeah. in my personal life, because I'm thinking about, oh my goodness, uh, I got to ask this person. I'm thinking of ideas for for the questions during the interviews, or I'm, or my phone is ringing. Hey, can I get an interview? Like, it never stops. Yeah. So. I mean... You, I mean, you're doing a lot. You have, is it like a nine to five kind of job? Yes. Like five days a week? Six days a week. Five, well, sometimes six, yeah. I, then, couldn't, I couldn't do it. That's all. <laughs> and then you have it's to do much. these interviews. Yeah, and then you have to do these interviews and be present with the person so you know, yes. you know, wherever to go next. Correct. And you got to be, I mean, you, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you have to come on. You got to be somewhat entertaining. You got to be, I wish I had as much I energy as you funny. right now. <laughs> I wish I had as much energy as you right now, but like you have to be ready to go. And like, you know, there's yeah. no slouching. When it comes I mean, this will be online forever. <laughs> Unless you take it down. <laughs> forever. Or Unless somebody. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you do have a new short film that's right now is pre production. Pre production. Um, it's called Dune. Tell us a little bit about Dune. Um, Doomed is a script that I wrote, it's a short horror film I wrote uh, during the pandemic and um, there was a lot of grief and a lot of feeling trapped during the pandemic 
And I think, and looking back, I think that's probably where, where the script kind of poured out of me. I, um, it, it's about a girl who loses her sister and on the anniversary of her death, she decides to go check out the haunted house. They used to walk around as kids. They never went inside the house, but she thought maybe it would be a nice, a nice way to honor her sister if she if she went into the house and like, hey, I'm actually gonna do it. Um, even, even though you're not here with me physically. And it's just a way for her to feel closer to her sister. Little does she know, there's some motherfucking ghosts in there and they're gonna fuck with her. That it'll be fun. <laughs> now, now, right now, um, you said you're in pre-production. And I understand you also have, you just reopened a campaign for Indiegogo? Um, I did GoFundMe this time. GoFundMe, okay. Mm -hmm. okay so, by the way, the link for that bad boy is down in the description box, so definitely. Click that shit. <laughs> yes. Now, now, do you got any fun perks for any supporters? Yeah, I have perks. Um, you know, they range from, you know, keeping keeping people in the loop for like the smaller kind of donations all the way up to like possible executive producer credit, um, signed posters, um, you know, screenings to the future screenings of this film and also other things that I'm producing um, and free tickets to um, I have a sketch comedy show that I do regularly at a theater um, here in New York City. And if you are in New York City, and depending on how much you donate, you could get free tickets to that show. Nice. And I have multiple shows throughout the year, so there's multiple chances to go. Okay. Definitely, definitely. So please check that out. Now, do you do you know when you're thinking about filming? Soon, like a couple months. A couple months? A couple months. Right, so we're looking at spring, summertime mm -hmm. release. I'm I'm thinking, I haven't set the pot the 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 time frame yet for the release. Um, there's a couple things that are that I'm in post production for right now that I am really focused on, and and um, one of them is called Witches Are Bitches, and it's like a comedy fantasy horror thing, <laughs> which will okay. be released nice during. Title. October and doomed. I definitely wanted to release it around October at least or in October. So I, I'm thinking about probably saving it until next year, even though it's not going to take a whole year or over a year to, to, um, to be in post-production, but, um, I'm thinking about, I, I'm not sure when I'm going to release it. Okay. So what got you into horror? Cause you, you've done a, you, you, you're big into horror. What got you into horror? I mean, did you grow up watching Goosebumps? Did you watch um, yeah. Are You Afraid of the Dark? I mean, I think when I look back, when I think back um, when I was younger and like what what I was interested in, I was really always interested in these kind of dark, darker themes and and um, and just horror. And like, I wasn't a, allowed to watch horror when I was younger. Um, my parents were religious and, um, you know, demons in the movies means demons in real life. Um, but I kind of just <laughs> would seek it out secretly. So I think that might be part of it too. It's like, a, it's, it's something that's forbidden almost, but, <laughs> but then now, now in my adult life, I'm like, um, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Now I'm allowed to have as much as I want of it and I create it. I don't know. I, I just, I was always just naturally drawn to that. So who are some horror filmmakers that you get inspiration from? Who? Um, I mean, obviously Jordan Peele, right? I mean, with the comedy and the horror that I do, like I want to be Jordan Peele. Um, I mean, there's just like so many. What, what are your favorites? Mine? Yeah. I like, throw it back to me. Um, I love John Carpenter. I I love Wes Craven, of course. Mm. Um, but someone I love that, you know, I feel like most people don't don't give that much love to, and that's Eli Roth. I, I'm a huge Eli Roth fan. Mm. So I'm a huge Eli Roth fan because you know why I like Eli Roth? Because he puts you in real world situations where, you know, which this could really fucking happen, I, you know? I, like, I, you know. I feel like. Well, I mean, Hostel is like one of my you kind favorite. of um. Hmm? 
Sorry, you kind of like paused a little. I didn't hear a lot of what you said. <laughs> oh, okay. Let me, let me, let me froze, um, and then I was trying to click because I didn't really. I was like, "Wait, is he frozen?" And then I'm like, <laughs> Wait, you're moving. I'm, I'm, I I'm, I'm, I'm good now. <laughs> God, it would be so great if we can just if we could do this in person. I've done a few um, podcast interviews, and I'm like, ah, uh, can someone ask me that where where we can do it in person? Because like, it's just this. You know, ever since the pandemic, like I'm just this, this, this freaking internet shit, man. It's but, but I, don't care stuff, what, man. I don't care what video streaming, what's called, they're all shitty. Like, yes, oh my god, they're all shitty. And like, I, you have the best internet ever. Like, and they're all shitty. Like every single one of them. Like I'm using Streamyard right now. I'm not bad mouthing Streamyard, but. Like they're all shitty. And I am. Like, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've, used, I've used Skype, Zoom, all, and like each and every one of them, like they freeze up or like something, or it's a bad echo. It's a it's a pain in the fucking ass. And yeah. I agree with you. That's my <laughs> ultimate goal. One day is to have a studio or something, and people can come in like Oprah yeah. or, or something. You know. Yeah, because it, it just happened for so long, that, and then you were like stopping and starting, and I was, and you know those moments where you're like, should I just pretend like I'm listening, or I, do. Like, <laughs> I should, I'm sorry, I should have done that. I, I, I had to have happening so so much. I'm like this, <laughs> oh, but then I I felt like it got quiet, and I was like. Wait, but is he talking? <laughs> is he not talking? Do I respond? But what did he say? How as long I, as they're still I moving, I don't know what he said. <laughs> like as long, long as they're still moving, I just go like this. <laughs> yeah, if they go, then then I'm like, hello, hello. Yeah. Hello. That's yeah. Funny. Yes. Anyway, I don't remember what we're talking about. Oh, but uh, Eli Roth. I, yes. I love Eli Roth. Because, yes. Yeah, real life, real life situations that I personally, I was like. Oh, I could have been definitely been in that, in that situation and got killed, you know. So I mean, that's why I like Eli Roth. I, you know, I love horror. Also, this is this is what's coming to mind too because recently I I've been feeling kind of like the last a couple of days ago I was feeling kind of anxious and for some reason I was like, fuck, I need to watch a horror movie. I need to watch some horror. And for some reason that got me out of my head, that made me feel. And then when, you, when you're when you able to escape for a little bit from your brain, you're able to come back and feel better. Um, yeah. and, and that's another reason for sure. And then I love and I love looking at situations and be like, well, I would do this and I would do exactly. that. That's what <laughs> <I'm talking> <laughs> and I also like watching, by the way, I would never ever say any names. I like watching bad horror movies. I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like, terrible horror movies that are, like, like, like the Sharknados and stuff like that. I don't know if they're purposely done bad, but, like, it's, like... Sharknado. Yeah, it's, like, like I like watching those bad shark horror movies and those, you know, crazy clowns and stuff like that. That has no story. It's just something... Crazy. It's basically comedy. I mean... Yeah. I love those. It's entertainment. Yes. Who are we to look down on entertainment if we are entertained? Exactly. And it doesn't have to be high produced or anything. I love a good old, every once in a while, I, I love going to be and finding the worst poster I can find and the worst trailer I can find and sit back and enjoy it. <laughs> really? Yeah. I should try doing that. All right. Just, next time, next time I'm feeling anxious and I need to, I need to watch some horror. I'm going to do that. <laughs> But that's what I was doing with my show before I started doing interviews. I would go on TV and find a, what looked like the worst horror movie possible. Just the poster, the, the title, and the description, and the trailer. And I will watch it, and I will review it on a 2B level. Not mm. on a... I would give it a 2B grade. Mm. I love... Like, I grew up on watching the mystery science theater mm -hmm. stuff and watching them goof on low-budget B horror movies. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love them. Trolls I watched recently. Trolls 2. Trolls is amazing. Troll, Trolls 2 is a classic bad yeah, movie. I watched it many, 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 many years back. And then recently I was like, let me let me watch a few clips of this. I, I need a <laughs> laugh. I don't know. I need some inspiration. <laughs> you got to watch one. It's 
streaming on Tubi, Veloster Pastor. Veloster Pastor, you have to watch it. Veloster it is, Pastor? Yes. It okay, is okay. As, Let me just guess what it's about. Okay, so okay. Um, it's a Velociraptor who's also a pastor in modern times. Well, and he's like, so misunderstood that he becomes a villain. And people are so people are so annoyed by him and his presence that he gets more and more angry. And then suddenly he's gonna eat the whole city. That I actually, <laughs> actually he's a good guy. He's a pastor who turns into a Veloster Raptor, which is not that's what he turns he turns into like a T-Rex party city costume. And he fights ninjas. Ninjas. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that. Ninjas. Absolutely. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. That's funny. Anytime, <laughs> anytime something blows up, they don't even show it. They just put car blew up in writing. Wait, wait, is this on purpose? Are they doing it on purpose? Or is it like... I, I think so. I, I okay. hope so. Because <laughs> I was laughing the whole entire time. <laughs> yeah, um, it's great when 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 it's not on purpose, mm -hmm. and it's great when it is on purpose. It's it's, it's the best of both worlds because I love a good vanity project too. I love a good vanity project. Yeah, you know, I think probably I need to. I I I think was it before the interview or or when the interview started that I mentioned that I I haven't put comedy and horror together yet. Um, they've always been kind of yes. separate lanes. Um, you know, I do have a lot of my comedy has like, like, uh, dark undertones to it, or I throw in a lot of, uh, supernatural kind of elements to it. Um, and the same with horror, I'll do like, I, I won't take it too seriously. And, and of course there's, you know, jokes here and there, but I've never gone all the way and like mush them together. <laughs> You know, have them make love. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I, I need to do that. <laughs> I I do a lot of like films that are like, um, um, you know, they they mean something else. <laughs> yes. Or, or I mean, it, it, I mean exactly what I'm saying in the film. See, and and I'm telling you, when it's done right, you do the horror and the comedy. That it's 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 a masterpiece. Now. I do have a question. Speaking of vanity projects, have you ever considered doing a vanity project? I mean, you're a filmmaker, you're a writer, and you're an actress. Have you ever thought to yourself, you know what? I am going to write a movie, make a movie, and guess what? Fuck this shit. I'm going to be the lead actress as well. Well, you know what? I. <laughs> That's funny. Um, <laughs> I usually cast myself in the movies. <laughs> so. Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I usually have a character that I've written for myself. Uh -huh. and, um, and you know, when I started out as an actress, like I, there was a lot of time of me just trying to get into the room and trying to prove what I can do and trying to prove myself all the time, you know, begging to like, you know, be seen by the right people. And then when I started creating my own work, I'm, um, you know, I, I was able to do that as well as an actress, I can highlight myself. Um, but I I don't think of it so much as vanity because I, I do care about all of the whole picture and everyone else involved and the other characters, story, etc. But you know what? <laughs> Fuck it. It's all about me, okay? It's it's about me. <laughs> Thank you. Listen, honesty, listen, honesty <laughs> is what's important, okay? Yeah. We're we're not judging you. This is this in any horror when we're we're, we're, we're non-judgmental. <laughs> it's a vanity project. We're not gonna judge you from the project. Okay. You no, know, and it does a, a lot of my shit does feel like so like like vanity projects because I to a certain extent, but like I feel like I write so much from like my, my soul, you know, and it's it's just so it's just like something that just needs to come out and I need to like create it, I need to make it and put it to I have to put all the pieces together. And like one of those pieces is you know, executing um, something as as an actor. And I, you know, say, oh, like, yeah, I know that that as an actor will be challenging, but I think I can do it. And, you know, it's, it's I, I like putting the pieces together and, and then using all my capabilities to do that as well. <laughs> that makes sense. Well, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. But I mean, so it doesn't sound like necessary what you're doing with Vanity Project. At the same time, 
I don't know. I mean, but in order to be a Vanity Project, though, you have to, as a lead actress, you have to have people constantly say, wow, she's the most beautiful woman in the world. Oh, she is the smartest woman in the world. Like, it has to be, that has to be said throughout the whole entire movie. Okay. Okay. I definitely don't play those kind of characters. Okay, good. <laughs> except, except maybe Shazman, the life of a pop star. Um, if you if you haven't seen it, if anyone's watching this and wants to see Shazman, the life of a pop star, it's about um, a coked out pop star and it's in the vein of like the the re reality shows and she's making her next upcoming album and she's um, nice. on coke the entire time. So she likes to hear how great she is. <laughs> Now, what's that called again? Shazman, the life of a pop star. Okay. Not no, the that's, but that's, that's more, but that's more of being a diva, I think. I think yeah. there's a difference between being a diva and being vanity. Like, for instance, um, Steven Seagal, all his movies are vanity projects. Mm. I don't know. If, I'm not a huge Steven Seagal fan. But he has written in his contracts where he can get hit. So he's doing a billion fight scenes in a movie and he never gets hit once. So he literally is no no scratches, no bruises, no anything. It's about highlighting him and making him look amazing and great. Unstoppable, what can call it. He gets the regardless of story, except has like three different sex scenes throughout the movie with super young, attractive women. Vanity project. <laughs> Maybe I should do that. <laughs> <laughs> If I ever been, uh, been, been made a movie, I would be afraid. See, but here's my thing. I wouldn't. I would, I don't know if I would put. I'm not an actor. I've never acted. Um, I don't, I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure I would not be the lead actor. I might be like a Stephen King. I might pop in as as some wacky character somewhere in the movie. But I personally, that goes back to what I'm saying before in the beginning. I cannot multitask and do a billion things at once. So I would just focus on one thing because if I was trying to act, I would try to perfect that. I would be trying to perfect the filmmaking. I would try to perfect the writing. And it would just be too much. Yeah. Yeah, that's hard because um, <clears throat> I'm also a little bit of perfectionist too. But it's it's really about knowing what to let go and when to let go of things. And then also knowing when not to let go of yes. certain things. Yeah. So that's hard. Now, now, who's the one person in your life, what, what, when it comes to writing a script or the finished product of a movie, that you show it to, that you trust their opinion more than anybody, you let them see it first? Um, I have like a bunch of writer friends that I kind of go to and I kind of shuffle through. I do write a lot. So there, and there isn't one person in particular that I'm like, I always show this person my script and I want to hear what they say first. And um, th there are people that I, I, I hold, I hold their opinion very in high regard, but um, there isn't one particular person though. The, I mean, I guess I would say that my husband, I, I do, I do care very much about what he thinks. <laughs> So I guess I, I, I don't wait. I don't get send him the script and have him read it and all that. But when the fringe project is done, I'm just I'm like showing it to him. And I'm like, <laughs> did you did you hear that joke? <laughs> was that you saw that it was scary? Wait, let me go back so you can rewatch that part. <laughs> now, has your husband told you what his favorite movie that you made is? Do you, do you know what his favorite movie of yours is? Oh my God, I should ask him. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to ask him. I'm I mean, literally, that is a great question. I'm literally going to type that note down and ask him. That's an excellent question. <laughs> and he might say, honey, I love all of them equally. Or I know, right? <laughs> Like every every man was. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> no, he's pretty honest, which is why I, I, I do care about his opinion a lot. But there's there's um, also other people that are doing <clears throat> who are who are kind of doing what I'm doing. And um, I, I do write a lot of I'm, I'm trying to get better at writing TV pilots and, and I, I want to pitch TV shows. Um, I, I write a lot of short scripts and I write a lot of web series. Um, and there's other people who are doing exactly those things and know 
say say they I feel like they're they're um they've progressed further than I have. And so I definitely reach out to those people and be like, hey, am I am I doing this right? <laughs> like, yeah. hey, I want to be where you are. What do you think about this? You know? I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, I what you spoke of, I like when I say indie horror people stick together. I recently um, oh, saw something and I had to speak up about it. Um, I saw a, a, a indie filmmaker who's been out for a while. And he posted on his social media in one of these groups, he posted out that a filmmaker sent, you know, trusted his opinion and he, and he sent him a movie. And this guy literally bashed this person's movie. I mean, it wasn't just a, hey, you know, constructive criticism. It was, mm -hmm. oh, this will make me throw up. This will make me take a shit. Like, it was so bad. And I had to comment, like, hey, that's not cool. Like, you would not want somebody to say something like that about your movie. And that's the first time I've ever seen like an indie filmmaker be that vicious and nasty towards another filmmaker who was who trusted their opinion. Yeah. And, and not only did it bash it, but like, yeah, I had to bring that up because that's something that's been on my head. Yeah, that's what a fucking asshole. Like yeah. those are those are the kind of people. That it's like, what? What is the point? What? What is the point of being cruel? Like, don't yeah. say anything. Then, if it's not going to be constructive, just shut the fuck up. And like, this is the guy. Who, the point of like, they obviously get off on like hurt hurting somebody. And this is a guy who makes nothing but Vandy projects. Franklin Correa, I'm talking about you, but mm, yes, but he yeah. makes nothing but Vandy projects. <laughs> and I, I just like, wow, dude, like, like. I don't know. I, you know what I mean? This this kid is coming to you because you've been doing this for 20 some years. I'm like, I just thought that was the shittiest thing and it bothered me. And I felt like I had to speak up about it. Yeah, speak up. Yes. Yes. What the <laughs> fuck? that guy. We should yeah, all we should all leave a comment. Yeah. <laughs> You're a fucking asshole. Nobody wants you fucking here. Asshole. <laughs> Uh, all right, so listen. So this is the fun part of the interview. Listen, we've already had fun. Wow! Even more fun now. All right. So you know this is a horror channel, so I'm gonna ask you three horror questions. Are you ready? Oh snap! All right. Guess Am I ready? Question. All right. Who is go your ahead. Favorite final girl. Your favorite final girl. Favorite final girl. Fate. Wait. Favorite. Yes. <sighs> I hate favorite questions. Um. Okay, so this this is not my favorite, but okay. I'm going to say this is my favorite right now because I just recently watched the, the last two Scream movies. Okay. Sydney Prescott. I mean, Sydney Prescott's a great one. Amazing. But but then but uh, but there's so there's so many. Okay, no, I'm going to go with her because I watched those I, I recently watched the last two Scream movies even though she was not in the last one. Yes. The most recent one. I, I'm going to go with her because she's a fucking badass. She's my second favorite one behind hey. Lori Strode, Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh my God. You put me on the spot. I should have said her. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Her. Number one, no, number I, changed I changed it. I changed it. All right. <laughs> Here's the next one. Who is yeah. your favorite? You ready? Okay. Okay, go ahead. All horror villain. Horror villain. <sighs> Favorite horror villain. I was going to even make it even harder and say of color, but let's just say all women. <laughs> so that makes things so much more difficult, right? Because yes. <laughs> let, <laughs> let me not get started on that tangent. <laughs> um, have you seen Pearl? Yes, Pearl's amazing. Okay, so recently watched X and Pearl, so I'm just going to say them. I mean, I mean, I'm just gonna say her, Pearl. Pearl. Uh, but, but there's so many other ones. There's so many other ones. <laughs> there's so many other ones. I did a top five um, ranking, and Pearl. I want to say she was number five or number four on my list. I who's, love Pearl. I love X. Who's your number one? Which one was my number one? I think my number one was Selma Hayek and From Dust Till Dawn. Um, mm. She played. She played as vampire chick with the with the snake. Mm. I think that was my number one. 
It was either that or Natasha Hendrick from Species. It was but you know, the, these, the rankings and like picking the favorites, for me, it always changes. Like it changes with how I feel. <laughs> it changes with what I've recently watched <laughs> because things, thing, I forget things and things leave my brain. Mm -hmm. And and until I'm reminded of it and I'm like, oh, this, this is my favorite. But then it just changes all the time. And it's like, why choose? <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to hit you with a hard question. You ready? You thought oh, those shit. two was hard, but this was hard. Oh, all right. So <gasps> a, big, a big movie company comes up to you. They're going to back up the Brinks truck. All right. You ready? And they want you to do a reboot of an iconic horror movie with an iconic horror character. But this time, instead of being a male, it's now going to be a woman. Who is it going to be? I'm pretending like this is real. <laughs> <laughs> Anxiety. <laughs> what will I choose? You got, um, got Freddie, you got Jason, you got Michael Myers, you got Letterface, you got Tom. Um, okay. I'm going to choose Leatherface. Yes. I'm going to choose Leatherface because. Okay. I'm going to turn it around and plug one of my horror movies. <laughs> okay, go ahead. It's called Raven. It's a short film. Um, it's on YouTube. You can watch it now. And if, and here, and you know what? I'm, I'm not going to say more about it because I'm going to say Leatherface and then you're going to start watching the movie and you're going to be like, what does this have to do with Leatherface? <laughs> <laughs> but then you might make the connection. So I'm going to just leave that, leave that for you. By the way, Jasmine's YouTube channel is down in the description box, too. So please go and check that out and hit that subscribe button for her. Yes. Um, I have a new uh, production company. It's Simmering Fire Productions. Hopefully we link it down there. Um, and that's where all my my uh, my new stuff will come out. Um, I used to have a horror, specifically horror company, where I just produced um, horror content. But now it's under this new banner of Simmering Fire Productions. I'm going to have comedy and horror. So, sweet. Yeah. All right. So, Jasmine, where can everyone find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram or Facebook. Instagram, I'm more active um, at Jasmine Cornell. And you can also follow my company at Simmering Fire Productions. Or you can, and hey, you know what? If you're in NYC or in, or in the surrounding areas, Come watch one of my sketch comedy shows and follow um, at a series of unfortunate folks. Sweet. Listen, everybody, follow Jasmine and look yeah. out sometime next year for <laughs> You can watch other shit though, right now. But there's other shit now. And there, there, there's a movie <laughs> called Raven. There's a movie called Raven that has nothing to do with Letterface, apparently. <laughs> you, might, you might be able to put connections together. I'm gonna maybe, check it out and see if I can maybe. Um yes, yes, yes. I was gonna say something else and I forgot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the that ADHD. Yes, boom. <laughs> That's, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. You're more than welcome to come back on anytime. Oh, thank you so much. I had fun. This is so much fun. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for coming to the horror room. I'm Travis Bruce. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.